Are you out there shopping for a new heavy duty truck? Are you concerned about which one's gonna last, which ones aren't? These trucks have gotten really expensive and you certainly don't wanna buy a lemon. In this video, I'm gonna give you my information that I did some research on to tell you what is the best or worst reliable heavy duty truck on the market. Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. If it's your first time on the channel, welcome. On this channel, you'll find truck and SUV news reviews, interesting stuff I do, like these videos. I do lots of videos and dependability on this because it's really important to me to understand what's happening in these trucks and report the information to you. I've been a journalist now for over 10 years. I've been covering the truck and SUV market exclusively and I love digging in deep to figure out what problems you guys are having and what I can do to bring those problems to light to help you get them solved. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip the camera on, I'm gonna put it on the screen, I'm gonna do a little screen capture when I'm going, look at three main sites that I like to go to, carcomplace.com, nitsa.gov, and Consumer Reports. Now, I have access to consumer reports behind the scenes. I can't give you the information on the screen, but I put it all together in an article I wrote, and so we'll kind of go through this, talked about the 2021 heavy duty trucks, and which ones are the more reliable. Now, let's talk real fast about these kind of expectations we have. I'm looking at the 2021 models, or 2020 models, excuse me, looking at the 2020 models, what's gonna be most reliable. Now, this is future predictions. Clearly, I mean, the trucks are just on the lots or maybe the 2021 is coming over depending when you watch this video. So they're just getting on the lots. So this is predicted reliability. We're looking at past performance to predict future reliability. The reason for that is a lot of the truck internal parts stay the same year over year, even with a brand new changeover. Uh, a lot of times the changeover is just sheet metal, it's just trim work, it's interior stuff. But some of the main parts like brake boosters or brake shoes or you know uh, fans or things, are all the same year over year. So we can kind of look back and have a really good idea of where things have come from and where they may go in the future. And because we can't say that that truck and lot is gonna last you a million miles, there's no way you can say that, there's a lot of factors involved. This is the best way I know to present this information to give you some idea of what you can expect when you buy that truck. So hey, sit back, pour, pop top, put a little uh, something in your coffee. We're going to relax. We're going to get to this information. It's going to be a lot. Bear with me. Let's get to all of this right now. Okay, let's dig into this as far as reliability on heavy duty trucks. Before I do that, let me make sure I'm very clear. There's a lot of variables involved in here. You have different engines, different transmissions, different size of trucks, crew cab, regular cab. You have power wagon. You have the new tremor. I mean, there's so many variations, heavy duty trucks. I would say it's one of the most diverse vehicle classes we have. So I'm gonna give you some general information and I know I'm gonna miss some things, put them down below guys. In the future years, I'll try to do my best to make sure you get all the details. But let's kind of go take a big kind of glance overview. And I wrote about this recently on pickuptrucktalk.com. Um, so if you go to pickuptrucktalk.com, you can kind of search for this. It's uh, under, under 2020 heavy duty trucks, how reliable are they? And I was really looking for some good data and I put together looking at the different sites and forums and such to try to understand like a starting point, like what am I looking at for liability? What are the common problems? And what are the things that like you as a consumer would wanna know? And so let's take a look at this. We'll start with Chevy, which is just like GMC, same trucks um, as far as powertrain, uh, frame and stuff like that. There may be some slight changes in packaging. Maybe you can get this, and, like Denali trims only come in GMC and AT4 has a diesel. Um, well, actually that's half ton. I can see it, there's a lot of confusion, but you know, Let's put them both together because that's how most people see them. Then there's Ford and there's Ram. There's only those three main players in this segment. So starting with Chevy, what I did was I looked through some data going back to 2017. I also looked at Consumer Reports and for each year they put a one through five on how reliable the truck was and I added all this together as a score at the end. I also looked at the total amount of recalls and put those together in a number two because um, TSBs are one thing where technical service bulletins where the dealer is getting communication from the manufacturer and problems, but recalls are a little bit different. Recalls are pretty serious. And so I like the information is pretty good to get an idea of where they're looking at for quality. And so looking at the Chevy Silverado and you look at this truck, now most common complaints for this truck has been steering, brakes, the CP4 fuel pump for a certain Duramax engine, transmission, faulty engine block heater and poor lights. And so looking at steering, many people complain about a loose steering feel or a complete lockup of steering at low speeds. Several TSBs about this. Looks like 2015 model year, there's 17 different TSBs I counted up about that problem. Uh, there's a possible fix where the, a pitman shaft has an adjuster screw 
and that becomes loose. As it becomes loose, everything gets kind of loose in the steering field. So that's been a TSB to fix that. Transmission issues, they're surging at the wrong times, having a shutter at high speeds. Now I want to talk to you right now, let's get this out of the way, is that there is such a thing as a death wobble and a thing as a Chevy shake. At higher speeds, some heavy duty trucks exhibit a situation where the steering wheel just shakes like crazy. You can go on YouTube and find tons of videos about this. Um, it seems like when I've dug into this, there's always a different solution for different brands. Sometimes it's tires, sometimes it's tire alignment, sometimes it needs a steering dampener on the steering, um, on the steering wheel, which is kind of strange. Uh, sometimes it's the tie rod ends, sometimes there's just different things going on. So I have found that most of the time those problems get fixed, but every once in a while there's a story that comes across where a guy had a death wobble, or a girl had a death wobble in her truck, and it couldn't get fixed. So keep in mind, all brands have this, and all engineers are working hard to identify it, but it's, it's such a, varying, a variable kind of issue that always kind of comes up. Now, I want to talk to you about the LML diesel engine. This was offered through 2016. They have a new one, which is the, I didn't type it up, darn it, it's like an LBZ. I think it's kind of what I had it. And the LML engine had a CP4 fuel pump, which made by Bosch. And this would sometimes let some metal shavings in the engine. It would actually grenade the engine, as they called it. And so basically destroyed the engine. So make sure you double check that fuel pump. Make sure you find either the aftermarket work workaround or you get it serviced or something. You know, make, just make sure you're aware of that issue. Electrical issues were focused on the stability track, traction control, and brake light coming on at the same time. And so this was like, um, it would just show up on the screen. And it was led to believe in the, what I've read was it was based on a brake booster failing and you need to check the brake fluid. So you need to check the brake booster and check the brake fluid and it takes care of that problem. Another issue was the dash going dark and then they pull over and they start it up again and come up. It's a weird sensor issue, and I don't know that there ever was a fix for that, just a really random sensor issue. Overall, I counted 60 recalls for the Chevy Silverado, and I counted, well, 60 recalls for all of them, but broken down, 26 recalls, 2,500, 34 recalls for one ton. Consumer reports reliability was 15 out of 25 for the 2,500, and 18 out of 25, 3,500. Now, the information I got was, I'm going to show you, it's from carcomplaints.com, and you can do your own research. Here it is, you can see by graphs, you can see you know, problems per model year, and you can see below, brakes failed, lock up low speeds, things I've talked about. Uh, there's a couple, like the DEF system, I didn't find that too big of an issue. And looking at the worst model year was brakes problems. And again, that was that brake booster, that light's coming on, the really soft pedal, um, it seemed like there was a brake booster issue during those model years. When you look at nits.gov, which you can just, it's a great site too, you can go type in, um, you type in recalls, you can search by VIN, year, make, model, and you can kind of go through and see what people are, are having issues with. And as you go down, you'll find a couple recalls there, and you'll find complaints, and you see the majority of the complaints, 154 complaints, most of them on service breaks. Again, it's that really weird soft pedal issue, which leads me to believe it's, it's basically about the brake booster and those issues going on. There's a variety more issues going on. I'm not saying brake booster is the entire issue. There's a variety more issues going on but brakes have been the big concern. Now, if you don't know this, uh, the Duramax and Allison are widely regarded as one of the most reliable powertrains out there. So if you're going with a Duramax diesel with Allison transmission, it should be a really good powertrain. The new 6.6 .6 liter gas came out in 2020. Untested yet, we don't know a lot of information about that, but I don't have any issues with, uh, I don't have that many issues with Chevy engines. It seems like they do pretty well. There is some oil consumption concerns with some of the active fuel management, dynamic fuel management in the half tons. But I've heard a lot of people have like really good luck with Chevy block engines. So let's go to the Ford. Let's go to the, the next, let's go to Ford. Um, I'm gonna kind of skip through this a little fast because this my computer won't process as much video. <laughs> it really has some problems. Now, when I started looking at Ford Super Duty and a great truck, uh, been building it for years, one of the best trucks selling trucks in the marketplace, especially for half heavy duty. And they also win in half ton. Uh, it came down, to death wobble. It literally, my search was dominated by death wobble. I don't know what is going on with four trucks lately, but it seems like if you get a four truck and you don't have death wobble, you got a great truck. If you have a four truck and you get this death wobble, like I said, that shake of the steering wheel, wow. It just seems like that's the prevalent issue I've been finding. And I, I put one person's description on here, but basically he said, the truck will start shaking violently and I slow it down drastically at highway speeds uses this truck mainly to tow my boat and is in completely stock form. This isn't something that should be happening to a $65,000 sticker truck 
with low miles, he's got 25,000 miles on it and poses a serious danger. And I absolutely agree with him. That's a load of garbage. So there's a class action lawsuit over that issue. Again, I've talked to some people that have, have gone to the dealership and the dealerships had the parts, uh, whatever it is, tie rod issue, wheel balance issue, and they've got it fixed. I've also had other people that just never get it fixed and the truck gets bought back by the dealer. And then you have this class action lawsuit. A lot of stuff going on with this death wobble. It seems like, like I said, if you get one that doesn't have it, you are golden. If you get one that has it, be prepared. Now, side note, TFL did have a four Super Duty with 7.3 liter V8, the Godzilla engine, and there was an issue with a spark plug wire. They had to swap it out. So I had to put that in there because I knew you guys were going to watch both channels. So looking at the total recalls, I have 21 recalls for the F-250 and 26 recalls F-350. Some reports, 14 out of 25 and 15 out of 25 for the F-350, okay? The power stroke diesel in the F-350 and F-250 has been a very reliable diesel. The 7.3 liter V8 is a new engine. They do have a smaller one. You guys cru crucify me in the comments below, but they have a smaller, I want to say 6.2 liter V8 that's been around for quite a while. So you have a gas option too, it's been around quite a, quite a while. And from my understanding of it, and again, let me know in the comments, the four Super Duty lineup has been pretty reliable. They've had a few engine problems in the past. They've gotten some bad deals with Navistar. They've gotten rid of that stuff, but it seems like lately they've been pretty reliable. And this death wobble thing really got, really was surprising. I've, I couldn't believe all the problems. And look right here on carcomplaints.com, death wobble, shakes, hyper shaking. And if you look at the mileage, 68,000, 41,000, 58,000, and the average costs are all different. That's what I'm saying. Death wobble is such a weird situation because every situation looks like a little bit different. The problem's a little bit different. And it's basically the mechanics trying to diagnose what the issue is in the dealership to figure out what's going on. And when you look at NHTSA.gov and you look at the 12 recalls, now that's the big complaint with the class action lawsuit as there's been no recall from Ford on a death wobble. And I don't know if Ford can figure out what the death wobble you know, is the main cause is. You look at 788 complaints for the F2, this is just F250. And looking at these complaints, suspension, 443 steering 546 um, that is the majority I mean actually that math's not even close it's it's more that's more complaints than what they're even registering and that's steering and suspension I don't know why nitsa.gov is wrong but that steering suspension that is death wobble and look at the other complaints there's really nothing I mean there's here and there but nothing anywhere near the volume on those complaints okay so keep that in mind again uh, I think highly the Ford Super Duty I think the great trucks um, it seems like they've been pretty reliable, but death wobbles, man, it's just dominating those responses. Let's go down the Ram trucks, redone Ram trucks. I mean, gorgeous looking heavy duty truck. I really do like Ram trucks a lot for the 2,500 and 3,500, three quarter ton and one ton. You have issues like dead pedal feel drag link recall. That was a big issue it happened for 2015, 2018 models. We'll get more into that. A faulty turbo booster actuator caused some fires, uh, smoke bad deal there and cheap stock tires which is really i'm surprised i don't hear more complaints about the, the stock tires because stock tires historically are pretty terrible um, starting with dead pedal feel the, and i'm explaining this is the pedal acceleration they feel like inside the cabin on some of these older ram trucks and i don't know if it's on 2020 but it, i know 1918s especially and older is that when you put your foot on the gas it seems like there's a lag between the truck responding now this is due to changes over the years. So it used to be like on my 62 Chevy C10, I got a rod that gets in the back of the accelerator um, pedal. It goes right to the, well, to the carburetor in my case. So it opens and closes the gas in the carburetor. As over the years have changed, they've taken that away and they made an electronic response. And so the system senses how much pedal is going on and adjusts that correctly through the computer to make the truck get that much fuel. It allows them to uh, manipulate how much fuel is going in and also allows them to be more efficient and allows to get that like tow haul mode where like if you're towing 37,000 pounds you don't want to drive like it's towing empty you want it to drive a little bit differently because you want to accelerate a little bit slower you don't want to drag race you know with that much weight and you don't want to brake so harshly so there's those changes there what these guys are saying is is it's not right whatever the, whatever the engineers did they don't like it and so there's a company called pedal commander uh, I don't affiliate with them I'm not putting a link I don't care but there's companies out there, aftermarket companies that are actually, you plug them in to your truck. There's a, the, uh, there's a connection. I can't remember the name of the connection. And you can add sport driving modes. Now this is very popular in, in SUVs and getting a little more popular in full-size trucks 
but it's basically give you Eco, City, Sport, and Sport Plus. And those settings will change the pedal response based on what setting you're in. And so that's a very common, I've, I've read lots, some forum stuff, very common fix is that Pedal Commander takes care of that, now you get your trucks back. It feels like a truck again. And something you would be looking at, I think it's pretty important to notice that too for even heavy duty trucks, other brands. If you do have some issues where you don't feel like truck is responding that well, try an aftermarket prop. It may, may fix that problem because the sport modes aren't, haven't come all the way through to all different heavy duty trucks yet. The direct link recall, and I mentioned this specifically because I, I want to make sure I mention it because I'm going to get comments below because it really pisses some people off for a good reason. There's a drag link recall, so there's a steering issue. Uh, mechanics would replace the drag link assembly or they would weld the adjustable part of the steering linkage, rendering it not adjustable. This really pissed people off because if you get your tires aligned, you take that drag link and, you, and the steering linkage and you can adjust the alignment a little bit in those tires. And so once you weld that steering linkage together, you can't adjust it anymore. Whatever, whatever you have set up, that's what you have set up. And so you'd have to break it and then re-weld it back together after you adjust it. This is also known as a pain in the butt. And so it really pissed people off. So look at that truck, look at the steering linkage, see if they weld it together um, and make sure that, the, that there's an adjustable part there. It's in, the, it's in the link here. You can go look at the, TS, the, uh, the NHTSA form on that. There's a picture of it. If they did, just know you're gonna have to break that weld to get those truck wheels back in alignment, which is just, that wasn't a good fix. <laughs> Another large area of problems is loss of power. This is due to a faulty turbo boost actuator on the 6.7 liter Cummins engine. The Cummins engine is usually well known for being really reliable. In this case, there was an issue with this. Fairly common issue, there's a lost comma turbo that comes up on the truck, and it's a simple fix to dealer, you just swap out and replace it. But there has been a couple cases where smoke was rolling out underneath the hood. If, that's not good. Smoke coming out of the hood, never a good situation. Uh, the last thing was many one-ton owners, the stock necks and tires are terrible. I just hate them. So uh, a lot of other little complaints too. When I looked at total recalls, I have 43 for 2,500, 48 for 3,500, one-ton. Consumer Reports gives us 7 out of 25 for 2,500 and six out of 25 for one ton. I gave it an asterisk there because uh, they didn't rate all the years. And so what I did was I gave it a one or a minimum score for the years they didn't rank, which was basically pretty consistent with what they've been ranking these trucks. So Ram has always been the bottom of the barrel as far as reliability. The same case happens in my half ton videos, which I'll link to at the end. Um, it's similar situation there. I will say I've been mildly impressed with the strides Ram has made to improve quality. And we'll see next couple of years why these numbers change. Uh, going back, you know, you, you can look at carcomplaints.com when you look at Ram trucks and you can see the bar graph. 2012, 2015, 2014, lots of issues, death wobble, steering over place, knocking issues. Uh, you know, like I said, they, Ram trucks do have a death wobble like Ford has. It's a very weird problem and I, there, I don't think there's any silver bullet to fix it. Just to, it seems like everybody's got a different trick on that. And you look at nitsa.gov, and you have some tailgate um, opening expectedly, steering link which you may separate, drag link issue going on. Uh, that's recalls, and then you look at complaints, and the majority of the complaints here are gonna be 27 for steering. Yep, so some just the steering issues. It's, it happens to a lot of heavy duty trucks, and I'm not sure why heavy duty trucks seem like they always have these uh, issues plaguing them. Just the That's just what's happening. So if I were to recap real fast for you, and give you some real basic information. I would say Ram is number three, least reliable. Ford is number two, even though they sell a lot more volume with the other truck makers. Um, that death wobble issue is just all over the place. It seems like, like I said, if you get one that doesn't have it, you are golden. And number one would be Chevy, Chevy Silverado or GMC Sierra. Um, they've always had a pretty reliable truck and all my surveys bear that out. And I'm looking at the, um, actually for the last one, most of my surveys bear it out. They did a consumer report survey that said no, but most of my stuff has been pretty much go Chevy. I'm, it's kind of weird what's going on right now, but uh, the, the current half tons had a lot of issues. But this has been overall on this video, the Chevy Silverado has done pretty well from my understanding of research, looking at the one ton and three quarter ton. Uh, again, if you look at the Duramax engine with Allison transmission, that's been one of the highest regarded reliable powertrains out there. And I know a lot of guys that just swear by that. So it's something to look at. Um, the new gas engine is still new. We haven't gotten a lot of information back on that one yet. But hey, make sure you check this other video out over here. Website down below. Like all this information I found was all linked to the website. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you down the road.